Why, hello everyone! I'm your lovely host, Innocent, and welcome back to Dream Daddy. Last episode, we got to uh, hang out with Brian and do some things, and, uh, well, we're gonna continue with that trend. Shall we? <laughs> Hopefully I can remember how I did Brian's voice, so... Hey, Daisy and I are going fishing tomorrow. You in or out? Oh, I have a mes message from Brian. Oh no, I've been dreading this day. I accidentally busted my abilities as a fisherman to Brian, and now he is challenging me to another dad off. I've been doing my fishing research online, but I am nowhere close to being ex an expert. Still, though, I have to accept. I type back to Brian. Sounds great, man. Super excited to catch all those fish. And my lawn could use another good mowing. That'll show him. Brian responds back, letting me know that tomorrow he'll pick us up at an at an hour I had previously forgotten existed. Like, ten? <laughs> Man, this is gonna be a rough start. Amanda! Amanda comes into the room from the kitchen, eating a cheese stick by biting off a piece by piece, like some kind of monster. I didn't raise you like that. Hmm, what? It's called string cheese, not chompy cheese for a reason, Amanda. Ugh. Did you just call me in here to criticize me? Criticize my conversational string cheese eating technique or what? No, Amanda, we have to go fishing tomorrow. Well, you have to go fishing. I get to play with Brian's dog. How do I become a master of fishing overnight? You went to you went to fishing on the Girl Scouts, didn't you? The, what are words? Hmm? No, my stint in the Scouts was brief and purely transgressional. Thought I could get free cookies, but it didn't work out like that. I had to, like, be outside and tie knots and stuff. But I have to beat Brian. Hmm. Dad, let me tell you a story. Do you remember last summer how I applied for a job at the coffee shop across town? Uh, give me a refresher. During the interview, they asked me if I knew how to work an expression machine, and I really wanted the job, so I lied and said yes. On the first morning, there was a line out the door. Within half an hour, I severely burned my hand, and they told me to go home and never come back. I still have a scar from that. Of course I remember. What does that have to do with fishing? The burn is a metaphor, Dad. I don't get it. Hmm. You can lead a horse to water. What do have what 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 do horses have to do with fish and burns? Hmm. Dad, please! I don't get your obsession with competing against Brian. You wouldn't understand, it's a dad thing. Please try explaining it to me. Okay, Brian's just he just thinks that he's so much better than me, and he purposely reminds me of that whenever he can. It's like he has to one-up me, and I have to beat him at his own game. Huh? Is that what you think that's happening here? No, Amanda. Okay, I know that's what's happening. Oh. All right, Pops. I should both get some sleep. See you in the morning. Night, Amanda. <laughs> I brush my teeth, throw on some pajamas, and climb into bed. Set my alarm and close my eyes. Okay, sleep. I'm wide awake. I can't help but think about the last time I went fishing, hoping that there's something I can glean from it to give me an edge over Brian. I was about nine years old. My dad woke me up one morning and told me to get dressed and meet him downstairs. It was still dark out. I had no idea what was going on, but before I knew it, we were both alone in a freezing cold lake. I had to sit there for hours while it got hot and muggy, the air thickened with bugs. I picked up mosquito bites while my dad sat stony silent. In stony silence, fishing pole in one hand to be here in the other. We didn't catch anything. On the long drive home, my father brought me a pack bought me a pack of cigarettes and didn't say anything. That didn't help. I think I have some repressed sad sadness about my father. I'll deal with that later. I'm sitting on the boat in the middle of a body of water. I can't see the land, but I know it's a lake. The water is placid and still. I'm holding a fishing pole. I don't understand why, but it feels like my life depends on catching fish right now. I cast my lure into the water and wait, and wait, and wait. My whole being is filled with hopelessness, and I watch the line disappear into the depths below. You used the wrong lure. I look up and see my father, just as he looked at the one cold morning, disapproving. I'm panicking now. I pull the lure up and try to grab a different one. But all the lures in my tackle box are the exact same. I look up to my father before his, for his guidance, but he's gone. I try casting again, but I can't hold my footing. The boat tips over and I fall into the water, sinking further and further. I see multitudes of fish that have been lying just below the surface, all swimming around me as if to taunt me. 
One fish swims up to me. He has Brian's eyes. You gotta use a natural buoyancy lure if you're trying to catch trout, buddy. <laughs> I jolt away to the sound of my alarm. It's fishing day! That would explain the weird dream. I groggily slip on some clothes and get ready. I spot Amanda's door half open and see her still curled up in a mountain of blankets. Walking over to her bed, I give her a tiny kiss on the forehead. Fishing day, kiddo. You ready? Mm, no. No, well, you gotta get up. I can't do this without you. Also, stop sleeping in your clothes. Amanda pulls her comfy comforter over her head. Never. Amanda! Oh, get up. A minute. Alright, Brian should be here in 20. So you better not just go back to sleep. Amanda sticks her hand through the blanket to wave at me. I leave her room and make myself some coffee and another cup with lots of creamer and sugar for Amanda whenever she gets up and my headphones are dying. Hold on. Alright, we're back. Amanda eventually wanders in and chugs her coffee while I do word jumbles. I hear the doorbell ring. That must be Brian. Still rubbing our eyes, we walk outside to see Brian. He's ducked out in fishing gear. Daisy's falling asleep next to him. Ah. Early bird gets the worm, buddy. You ready to fish? I was born ready. My eyes narrowing on Brian. It's a good day to die. Up on in, guys. Let's get this fishing party started. I walk over to the driver's side door and open it up. <laughs> Brian's dog immediately hops into the driver's seat, wagging his tail furiously. Can I see your license, sir? Maxwell, let it isn't sit. Maxwell obediently hops into the back and cuddles with Daisy. Amanda settles in next to Maxwell and Daisy and immediately falls asleep. Are you ready for an adventure? I'm ready for glory. I struggle to stay awake as we drive to the outskirts of town. Country music plays quietly from the radio as I watch the trees pass by. So where exactly are we headed? It's about an hour north here. Little spot I've been going to since I was a kid. My dad used to take me there all the time. I don't think anybody else knows about it. I brought everything we need so that we can catch some trout. Have a nice little fire and enjoy the nature. My, uh, my fishing bowl is in the shop. Getting tuned up. Do, do you maybe have an extra I could, uh, borrow? But of course. It's probably not as nice as it sounds. Like yours is, though. I'm getting confused with words again. Right. I am digging a hole here. I stare at the front. I stare at the forest lining the highway. The sun is just barely over the horizon, scattering dust, dusty pink light through the trees. For a split second, I spot a deer grazing on the side of the road before it leaps back into the brush. After a nice quiet drive, Brad eventually tells me to pull off the highway and into the dirt road. A dirt road. A car bumps along until we reach a clearing that opens up into a magnificent lake. Well, here we are. I step out of the car and help Brian unload our gear as Maxwell runs around us, barking. The kids wake up and wander over to the shore, where Daisy tries to teach Amanda how to skip rocks. Brian and I carry tackle boxes and coolers down to the edge of the lake, where he is, has a canoe waiting. <laughs> great. It's still in one piece. Hold on, help me out with this, Maxwell. I help Brian place a tiny, tiny dog-sized life vest on to Maxwell. <laughs> All right, your turn. Brian hands me a lime green life vest. Maybe if I fall, you'll save me. If I fall, I'm counting on you to rescue me. <laughs> Suit yourself. Brian turns to Amanda and Daisy, who are still skipping rocks. <laughs> you kids want to fish? Ugh. I'm good with just throwing rocks into the water. Amanda hurls a rock into the pond with gusto. Yeah, take that water. Amanda, you're supposed to be skipping them. What? Is that what we're there doing? <laughs> Daisy, don't you want to fish? Mm -hmm. I don't think catching fish is... I think catching fish is kind of inhumane. We're going to go explore the woods and look at bugs and stuff. <laughs> all right, be safe. Don't go too far. Brian puts a life vest around himself and we throw all of our equipment into the canoe. Maxwell happily jumps in and takes his place looking out over the front of the boat. I get into the canoe as Brian shoves off. We paddle together to get ourselves into the middle of the lake. Most freshwater fish usually feed at dusk and dawn, which is why we had to get you up so early. Yeah, I know. It's pretty common fisherman knowledge after all. Fisherman knowledge that I am knowledgeable about. 
Still a gambling man? You know it. Let's see who can catch more fish. You can catch more than one? Sounds so easy to me. What's on the line? Besides all the fish I'm going to catch, of course. Ah. <laughs> I was thinking something a little bit more high stakes than mowing a lawn. Custody of our children? <laughs> more than that. Let's say if I win, I get your weed whacker. The Whack Master 2000? That's a limited edition. But if you win, you get my pole saw. The Region Cut 3000. The cordless version? That's the one. Shit! The region cut 3,000 of the state of the art. My weed whacker is a prized possession, but there are some hard branches in the back of the yard that I've been begging to bit of bruning. Words. You're on. We shake on it. I suddenly remember that I don't know how to fish. My foolish fatherly pride will one day be my undoing. I watch as Brian ties a lure and does some stuff I can't quite follow with his fishing pole. He casts it into the lake. Ah, oh, boy, now I have to do that. I stare down at the tackle box and at the pole in my hands. Uh, some bait on that hook? I fish a worm from the styrofoam container Brian bought. It's slippery, but I think I can get in onto the hook if I just focus. Oh, God, I'm bleeding. Oh, God, there's blood everywhere. The worm is not on the hook. Need some help? Nope, I meant to do that. The blood attracts the fish. They, they can smell it up. A mile away, you know? Uh -huh. I think that's sharks. Nope, it's definitely fish! Oh god, now what? Uh, tie a knot or something. I make my pull and try to tie an elaborate looking knot to impress Brian. The classic hunter's bend. Learned that one in my youth. Yep, this one isn't coming apart anytime soon. With a knot like this, I will cast my heavenly line upon the unsuspecting water and deliver it unto us a bountiful harvest. I look over to Brian. He doesn't seem to be paying attention. Let's cast a sucker. I pull my rod back and launch the lure as hard as I can. Whoa. And the lure flies off the line and sails far, far away, landing in the lake with a loud sploosh. Sorry, I touched the wind speed wrong. This cold air drives the pressure down. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and take my pole. I know it's hard switching to a new pole. You're not used to. I'll fix up another lure. Brian hands me his pole with a smile and just... I just sit there, feeling like an idiot. <clears throat> oh no. Oh no. Another minigame. Fishing around here is easy. They group up, all you gotta do is line up through the same species and reel them in. I need to match three of the same species. Um, I can't tell them apart. Match that fish. I got this. Nice match. Nice catch. What? That's the northern pike. A spot fish that isn't great for you. I don't fucking care. Shh. That up. Now you're fishing. Shh. Shh. I'm not an idiot, I swear. Now you're fishing. Setting up move or something. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Good work. 
Wow, this is tougher than I thought. I look over to Brian, who's smiling and obviously enjoying his time out here on the lake. I'll crush him! Suddenly, the fishing pole jumps from my hand. I reflex reflexively tug upward. I think I got something big. Tip of the pole dips downward repeatedly, and the line starts to run. <laughs> Reel it in! I finally get the fish up right next to the boat. It's a long, beautiful rainbow trout. Brian hands me a net. It's all yours. I lean down and notice my hands are shaking with excitement. This fish is bigger than all the other ones. All the ones Brian's caught. The pole saw mine, and the pole saw is mine, and all my. The entire canoe tips over with me. I find myself sinking into the lake. Oh God damn it! I should have taken that life vest. All of a sudden, I'm embraced under the water and pulled up into Brian's arms. I'm finally dragged upwards, sputtering water. All of our gears. F all of our gear floats in the surface. Maxwell doggy paddles around us in circles, having a great time. Okay. <laughs> you all right? Does that count as one? Uh -huh. Well, seeing as all of our fish are now swimming back safely back into the lake, I guess so. Brian laughs. Let's get you to shore. Brian and I flip the canoe back over, fill it with our now soggy wet gear. We row back to the shore with Maxwell in tow. Once we get to the beach, Beach, Maxwell darts off into the woods. Brian takes off his shirt. Dots the lake water dots of lake water glistening in the sun across his strong back. Man, all that general contracting must have built that guy like an ox. I hope he doesn't notice me staring. Hey. <laughs> I'm gonna get a fire going so we can dry off. Wanna hand me yours? I yeah, yeah. Okay. I reluctantly take off my own shirt and toss it to Brian. I suddenly wish I had more setups and done, done more setups in life, or any setups at all, really. Another thing you've bested me at, you stupid, sexy Brian. You might as well fry that shirt up. Seems like the only one she'll have. <laughs> the day's young. We can fish from the shore. Once Brian gets the fire going, I sit and try to dry off my pants. Brian sets a couple lures out by the water's edge. <laughs> We're probably gonna have to put a kibosh on the competitive now. For now, yeah. Another day. Till another day. My stomach growls. Okay. <laughs> you hungry? Oh, I'm fine. Brian reaches into his cargo shorts and pulls out a few granola bars. Hey. I have a small child. I am flushed with snacks. Brian joins me by the fire and accept I accept the cargo short granola. <laughs> now we're back to waiting. Where did the girls get off to? Shouldn't they be back by now? Hmm. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. There are a couple of smart kids. That's what I'm worried about. They're too smart. They probably established a small rural government by this point, and installed themselves as leaders. I take a look around as the sun's cresting the tree line, casting the entire lake in a warm golden glow. The forest seems to be coming alive now. Birds chirp in the distance. Wow, nature is beautiful. A mosquito bites me. I slap my neck and curse. Nature sucks. <laughs> Here you go, bud. Brian hands me a bottle of bug spray. I begrudgingly take it and douse myself. Ugh, I always hated how much this stuff smells. <laughs> really? I always kind of liked it. Reminds me of being outside. Maybe you and I have different sentiments on outside. Maxwell comes bounding up to me, huge stick in his mouth. He drops it at my feet and looks up at me expectingly. <laughs> Throw that stick towards the woods! I hurl the stick as hard as I can towards the tree line. Maxwell bolts after it, running as fast as his stubby legs can carry him. Which, consequently, is not very fast. It's very cute, though. Hey. <laughs> nice throw, innocent. I turn away so he can't see me blush. Maxwell brings the stick back to me, clearly proud of himself. Good boy, Maxwell. You're a very good and speedy boy. You're the world's champ at fetch. It's time for the bets. What's the plan? Rub the belly. Maxwell rolls over and lets me rub his belly. He wiggles on the grass, clearly loving it. Ah, oh, shucks. <laughs> I feel like a bit of a third wheel here. Where's my belly rubs? <laughs> I, um. <laughs> I'm so flustered I can barely say anything. I just now focus on putting on Maxwell and hope Brian doesn't notice how much I'm sweating. While I'm playing with Maxwell, fish begin to routinely pull on Brian's lines. Watch... I watch Brian effortlessly fillet the fish, squeezing a bit of lemon on them and frying them up in the cast iron pan. Before we know it, 
We have a feast fit for a couple of shirtless dudes. Amanda and Daisy emerge from the woods, looking totally unscathed. Whoa, Dad Mod Patrol, I'm going to have to issue both citations and demand you both put on your shirts. There are children present. Brian tosses me my now dry shirt. I pull it over my head, thankful that I will no longer be distracted by Brian and his packs. Where have you guys been? Studying entomology. Oh, what? Ah. We are playing with bugs. Ah, I expected you guys to be more covered in, like, mud and stuff. Daisy looks offended. What do you take me for, a child? Amanda puts, Amanda puts her hand on Daisy's shoulder. Ugh. Right. We take a seat around the fire and Briar and serves up a generous pile of fish on paper plates. It's absolutely delicious. Why does he have to be so good at everything? Fish tastes okay? Daisy and Amanda both nod furiously. Mouths full of fish. It's incredible. I've never had fish this good. Yeah, it's, it's great. Old hand and hardened family recipe. Hmm. Why are your pants wet? Well, Amanda, we were out there in the lake and then... <laughs> and then I accidentally tipped over the boat. <laughs> Don't worry. All the gear floated up to the surface so we didn't lose anything. <laughs> right, Innocent? I, yeah, that, that's exactly what happened. I can't believe you just covered for me. Gosh, even how it humbles me. Try to beat me at everything, including my world-famous sense of humility. We finish up our fish and end up playing catch with Maxwell for a little while before we decide to head out. After cleaning up the camp, we pack up the station wagon and let Maxwell into the back seat. Poor pup falls asleep on cuddle and puddle right with Amanda and Daisy. They had a long day. You've been an ordeal today, bud. Let me drive you guys home. I want to prove that I am most awake dad on the block, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm beat. Fine. As we drive away, I take one last look into the lake disappearing behind us and smile. I rest my head against the window and a low rumble of the dirt road beneath us lulls me into a peaceful sleep. <laughs> hey, sleepyhead. I open my eyes and realize that I dozed off in the car. I self-consciously wipe a bit of drool from my chin. Oh, hey. I was resting my eyes. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, just in case we suddenly have to jump into any sort of conflict, so I'm super alive for it. And ready to fight. With my strong arms. <laughs> it's all good. You earned some rest, buddy. Thanks for coming out with us today. I had a lot of fun with you. Thanks for inviting us. I uh, also had fun, actually. Glad to hear it. Take it easy, yeah? You too. Take it uh, the easiest. Brian chuckles to himself as he unloads the car. Amanda and I get inside and immediately collapse onto the couch. Long day. Yep. I was so close to that pulse saw. Mm -hmm. Pulse saw? Yeah, Brian and I were competing to see who could catch the most fish and. Ugh, stop! Why do you care so much? Amanda Panna, just look at the guy! He's so obviously got my number and he's rubbing it in my face. <sighs> Dad, I love you. Hm. But you're kind of dumb sometimes. Uh, dumb? Clearly the superior dad. You know what? I don't have any of the energy required to properly unpack your weird fixation with asserting your masculinity. I'm going to bed. Night. Amanda slides off the couch and face down onto the floor. I am a tired slug. Amanda, that floor is disgusting. I don't care. Well, night, honey. Night, Pops. Alright. Day number two. Complete. Yeah, I did well. That's a 10 out of 10 if ever I've seen one. Thank you. <laughs> well, that was date number two with Brian. Ooh. <laughs> I'm actually enjoying this a lot more than I thought I would. My voice isn't enjoying it, but I am. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you had a wonderful time, and I hope to see you all so very soon. Peace out. Bye-bye. Hmm. <laughs>